Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This one's about baby proofing your house and today we're getting real. We're gonna take you on a tour of our current home so you can see each of the changes we've made to help keep Xander safe from our stuff and to keep our stuff relatively safe from him. Quick disclaimer here before we start the tour, we did not do a major house cleaning before I shot this video. And that was partly intentional because I don't want to come off in an unrealistic way about how we live, right? This is not a Pinterest photo shoot. This is our day-to-day -day living space. We've been quarantining for the last seven or eight months with a one-year-old while both working from home full-time. So the point of this tour is for me to paint you a picture of what baby proofing actually looks like in real life. And this is the first point I want to make in this video is that our baby proofing setup is far from perfect. We've taken a lot of measures that we think are important, but everyone's living situation is different. Everyone has a different layout to their house, a different set of uses for the rooms in their house. And that's especially true these days, given the higher rates of remote work we've started to see lately. So if your dining room has become your office or your basement has taken the place of your local gym down the street, you're no different than a lot of other people out there, ourselves included. And so how do you keep your house safe for a young child when you're spending more of your life inside and devoting more square footage to your various pursuits and activities than you'll probably ever have before? Well, as I see it, the answer does not involve going overboard. Baby proofing doesn't mean you have to transform your home into an asylum with padded walls and straitjackets just to keep your child from ever harming themselves. Now, as Xander has grown, there have been certain phases where I felt like my only job was to follow him around, make sure he didn't either kill himself or burn the house down. But baby proofing to me is about making sensible choices based on your particular circumstances and designating certain areas for use by your children while allowing yourself a little bit of leeway to say, you know what, that room over there, that's not a kid's room. While the baby is in that room, we're gonna commit to watching them more closely than we might otherwise because the setup is not 100% in terms of having absolutely everything out of reach. And a lot of people don't have that luxury of having unlimited storage space to keep things hidden away and inaccessible at all times. That includes us, as you'll see in a minute. And I don't think it's realistic to believe that everyone has the option of living that way. And in fact, I don't think most people do live that way. It would be super inconvenient to have to unpack a box every time you want to use something you own. And let's be honest for a moment here, if you're anything like us, the only time your house ever comes close to looking that neat and tidy is when you're about to have company over. Lately, for us, and I'm sure for a lot of you, that hasn't been happening all that often. So with that said, let's start the tour. Here we are in the entryway of the house, coming in the front door. The first thing I want to point out here is this pair of brackets on the wall. We had a baby gate here while Xander was learning to crawl and walk because of the two steps leading up here. And now that he's able to navigate stairs pretty well, we've taken that gate down because it was more of a pain than anything else like whenever we had to bring in groceries. But we'll put it back up for our next one. And I guess this is as good a time as any to announce on this channel somewhat officially that yes, we are expecting our second in February. It's a baby girl. We are thrilled that Xander's gonna have a little sister and we will definitely have lots of new experiences to share with you when the time comes. It's a girl. It's a girl. <laughs> so if you want to see lots more great baby videos, we've got plenty on the way, so do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know exactly when a new one comes out. So moving onto the kitchen, first we have these excellent cabinet drawer locks. These things are worth their weight in gold, and we got them as part of a little baby proofing kit, which I'll show you in a minute. As you can see, they do the job rather well, and I think more than anything else in the house, aside from probably the baby gates and the electrical outlet covers, these have done the most in terms of maintaining an overall level of safety. Now this kitchen island and the open shelving unit here are both pieces of furniture we acquired before we had kids. I know a lot of people have open storage like this in their homes. Maybe you live in a smaller place or you just don't have many out of the way storage spots to keep potential dangers out of reach. This is an example of a place where we had to adapt and make a few concessions. We used to keep glassware, corningware, appliances like blenders, all kinds of not baby friendly things on these shelves under the, the island here. And so we have found other places to stash those away and we've replaced them with some more innocuous type stuff like plastic Tupperware, a cooking pot or two, you know, things that it wouldn't be the end of the world if Xander got into them. We did also push the island almost against this black shelving unit to kind of dissuade him from going back there. And it works pretty well that way. Again, not perfect, but we've complemented this arrangement here by teaching him what is off limits. 
So we've got outlet covers on the wall. These covers are part of that kit I mentioned. And you'll notice as we go throughout the main level that we do have several of these potted plants. If you have plants in the house, you shouldn't feel like you need to get rid of them, right? Same idea as the furniture. No one's gonna go out and refurnish their entire house when they have a baby. Even if you can afford to do that, it's pretty wasteful and it's unnecessary. So we've had a spill or two and ended up with some potting soil on the floor, but there's nothing life-threatening about that either. It's just dirt, you can clean it. So one thing I wanna mention on that note is that no matter how well you baby-proof your house, your child will one day become Curious George. If they haven't gotten there already, then one day soon, they'll become the most curious little monkey. And as soon as they're crawling and walking around, they'll get into everything. They're growing so fast, their little minds are like sponges. They wanna touch everything, they wanna know what it is, they wanna feel it, they wanna experience it. Everything's new to them, so regardless of which baby-proofing measures you put in place, those need to be complemented by a thorough education. A huge part of baby proofing is teaching your child the basics. And we all know what those are. Heat is dangerous. Electricity is dangerous. Glass is dangerous. Metal surfaces with sharp edges are dangerous. Your child needs to know that as early as possible. And mark my words, you will have plenty of teaching opportunities once they start walking and running around to let them know where the danger points are in your home. Speaking of danger and getting it out of the way, here's the baby proofing kit I mentioned. It's got these cabinet drawer locks, the outlet covers, the doorknob protectors, which we haven't used yet because Xander isn't tall enough to start messing with the doorknobs. And thankfully we have knobs and not handles. I think you'll need a different type of protector if you do have those lever style door handles. But for everything you get in this kit sells for seven bucks, I think. Well worth the investment. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for this and maybe a few other things we'll cover. Now this used to be our living room, but as you can see, it has since been transformed into Xander's super happy fun land. So it's mostly a playroom these days. We do have a shelf with DVDs to the left and another shelf with some vinyl records in the middle there. In the case of the DVDs, we bought a bunch of plastic storage bins from Walmart and just packed them in there because Xander would yank them out, carry them around, throw them all over the place, step on them, and it just got to be a bit of a disaster. So with the records, he used to like pulling those out too, but there wasn't really an easy way to contain them. So we had to teach him that that was a no-no. Now there is one thing in this room you can't see, but I do want to point it out. We used to have a big glass top coffee table here and we ended up getting rid of it because not only was the table itself a potential hazard for obvious reasons, but the stuff we'd put on it, like dishes or drinks, were well within his reach. So I, I just built this little platform back here. It's actually just a long, thin table, and that way we can keep stuff out of the way and we've expanded his play area at the same time. So this is an example. You don't have to get rid of all the furniture and replace it, but in this case, it just made sense to get rid of one thing. Heading upstairs, here's a different style of baby gate from the one we've got in the entryway. This is a pressure-based system that includes an expansion for gating across different sized openings, but it did include a wall mounting kit when we bought it, so if you want that extra protection, you can bolt it into the studs. We found it holds super well just tightened against the drywall here, and so you don't need any tools really to put it up this way. It has this sort of double safety latch system where the tongue of the latch tucks under this spring-loaded piece. So this one's done rather well for us. There are tons of different options for baby gates out there, and it's the type of thing where people are constantly getting rid of them as their kids get older. So while we did buy this one new, we got the one downstairs from some friends. So I'd recommend keeping an eye out on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or your local community's free cycle or swap group, or just in your group of friends, because there's no need to buy one new if you can snag a good sturdy one for free or at a discount. This next item isn't necessarily a baby proofing thing, but it is, I would say, a safety feature. I bought five or six of these right after Xander was born and put them in along the upstairs hallway and in both our stairwells. I know some newer houses have outlets in the hallways where you can use the plug-in motion sensor lights, but our house was built in the 90s, so we got these battery-operated ones that have brackets you attach to the wall with double-sided stickies. And let me tell you, when you're up and down all night with a new baby and you're stumbling down the hallway half asleep in the dark, it's really nice to not only not wake everyone else up by turning on the, the hall ceiling lights, but also it's nice not having to fumble for a light switch and then blind yourself when you do find it. So as you walk, the lights turn on, and then once you've passed by, after 10 or 15 seconds, they turn off again. 
Next stop is Xander's bathroom. We've got the step stool, which came as part of his infant bathtub, the faucet extender so he can wash his hands and brush his teeth, or at least at this point, so we can help him do those things. These aren't baby proofing things, just figured I'd mention them for anyone who was curious because they do make the bathroom a little more toddler friendly. The important things in here are the spout protector and the bathtub mat. You've got a nice non-slip surface for bath time and a nice rubber buffer for any sharp edges or hard surfaces on the faucet. Xander's nursery might actually be the safest room in the house. A couple of these bedrooms upstairs are pretty small, so it took some planning to get the most out of the space. The only major baby proofing thing we did in here is hidden behind the dresser. There's this strap that screws into the stud to keep it from tipping over, and I highly recommend that if you have any tall, relatively narrow piece of furniture you think could potentially tip, because some terrible accidents have happened with small children because of heavier items like this, you use this feature. Install this, you will not regret doing so. So now we've come all the way down into the basement. This is the last stop on our tour. This is one of those areas I mentioned earlier where we don't let him down here often. And when we do, it's always with close supervision and a watchful eye over what he's doing. So welcome to my office. This is where I work my day job. It used to be a gaming room where I'd have friends over before the lockdowns. And these days it's also my studio. Bunch of new video equipment here I just got for the channel that I still have yet to organize and pack away. Here's my workstation where I'm recording this voiceover you're listening to right now. And also where I edit these videos. If you've got a basement in your house, you know it's where stuff tends to collect. We've got our staging area here for laundry waiting to be sorted and washed. We've got the spare bedroom down here that's basically just a storage room, a bunch of instruments and all the baby gear Xander has grown out of, although he still likes to pretend he's a little baby and sit in his jumper whenever we come down here. The main thing I wanted to point out is this play yard, which for us was a major, major shortcut when it came to baby proofing early on. If you've watched any of our previous videos on this channel, you've seen where this play yard was set up and taking up half of our living room. And for a good while after Xander was crawling, but before he started walking, we'd hang out with him in the play yard because it was like instant protection. We didn't need to do a whole lot of major stuff to the rest of the house until later because we had this. Now these are on the slightly more expensive side, I think around 80 bucks on Amazon. But again, you've got some options and these are also worth looking for used. Depending on how your house is laid out, a baby gate or two across the doorways of a room might work for you instead. But either way, it makes a lot of sense to create a little sectioned off zone and concentrate on making that baby proof while they're in those early stages of moving around so you can keep the rest of the house sort of like it is and then go room by room or stage by stage and move things and make changes as you need to. Well, there you have it. That is a tour of the majority of our house with a few less relevant areas omitted. You may have noticed a few things here and there you could nitpick over in the comments if you wanted to, but that's fine. Nitpick away. Again, I will readily admit that our setup isn't perfect, but we really do emphasize teaching with Xander in terms of what's safe and what isn't safe, and also what he's allowed to get into and what he shouldn't touch. Another tip I'd offer in that regard is something Sarah practiced very early, and that is teaching them how to navigate obstacles around the house in a way that's the safest from a physical standpoint. So we would actually work with Xander, and for example, when he got big enough to climb up a couple stairs, we would show him how to back down them carefully. Or once he could pull himself up onto the couch, Sarah would guide him through the motions of how to spin around and slide off the cushion feet first so he wasn't toppling down on his head. If some random event happens, say you're watching your child by yourself, you burn yourself while cooking or you have to run to the bathroom, you get an important phone call and you just don't happen to be right behind them with both hands outstretched every second of every day. And if you're a parent, you know that's not even close to possible. So teaching them how to maneuver in these sorts of ways is simply a means to equip them for those situations where they might need help but not necessarily have all the help you can give them in that moment. So overall, childproofing doesn't have to be a super painful process, and in fact it's mostly about making changes you feel comfortable with and that you can afford with the space and the resources available to you. And regardless of how meticulous you want to be about it, to shift the Curious George analogy a little bit, toddlers are like raccoons. They're crafty, they're very smart, and they will continuously surprise you with their ingenuity when it comes to getting into things you try to keep them out of. That's why your childproofing measures should absolutely be accompanied by a thorough education in safety. 
because all we really want at the end of the day is to keep our kids safe. And as they grow and we start to see them reaching new thresholds of independence, it can be scary sometimes to think about our diminishing ability as parents to protect them. When they start walking, we realize before long that we can't always keep them from falling. When they observe new things, we can't always be around to decide when to shield their eyes and ears. And as they form friendships and relationships, we can't guard their hearts on their behalf. What we can do is prepare them to stand up from the falls they'll take, to question the influences that challenge their beliefs, and to learn from the pain they'll experience. I don't know if most parents ever really understand the sum of the effect they have on their children, and maybe baby-proofing your house isn't a metaphor for what it means to be a parent. But then again, maybe it kind of is. Maybe it's our first reminder that we'll eventually have to let go. And maybe it's also a lesson in appreciating the values we'd like to impart in the meantime, so that when we do have to let go someday, we can do it not with regret or fear, but with at least some degree of comfort and pride over the part we've played in shaping their lives. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video and you think you'd enjoy lots of others like it, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you think we're doing well, and we will see you in the next one.